I'm Emily and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, we are currently doing a series with videos every Friday about how to declutter and how to organize your home life and schedule. Have you ever thought, my husband is the messy one, if he would just pick up his stuff, our house would be clean. Or my kids are the problem, if they would just clean up after themselves, our house would be amazing. <laughs> We've all been there before unless your husband happens to be the clean one between the two of you. And if you're one of those lucky people, you're so lucky. <laughs> but I think more cases than not, we're the ones we're pushing to clean and declutter and organize and our husbands are resisting it. If that's you, where it just feels like it's a constant struggle with your spouse, here is the secret to getting your husband to declutter. Let's get into this. You can't. You can't. <laughs> and I know, I hate that answer just as much as you do, but before you click away, let me explain. It's not all hopeless. There are things you can do and we're gonna talk through that in this video. So first of all, I wanted to read to you some of Marie Kondo's story. I particularly loved her story of how she found herself trying to get her family to declutter. She was constantly frustrated by how untidy her family was, by stuff that she saw collecting and gathering dust in the common areas of the home, particularly one closet in the middle of the house. So she would confront the owner of the object with the question of, have you used this lately? I don't think you need this anymore and was really confrontational about it, but of course that didn't work. So then what she did was hide the items in the back of the closet and then slowly sneak them out and get rid of them without the person knowing. In retrospect, I must admit that I was pretty arrogant. Once exposed, I was met with a flood of reproach and protest. In the end, I was forbidden to tidy anywhere but my room. If I could, I'd go back and give myself a good smack and make sure I didn't even consider such a ridiculous campaign. Getting rid of other people's things without permission demonstrates it's a sad lack of common sense. Although I must say, and I'll tell you about this in a minute, I'm definitely been guilty of it. Although stealth tactics generally succeed and items discarded are never missed, the risk of losing your family's trust is too great. So in my experience, I have broken my own rule once. When we moved into this house and I was still in the process of doing the KonMari tidying festival in my home and so I was going through our books before I put them on the office shelves. I had pulled out a sizable amount, let's say, of Brian's books and stuff that I knew he didn't need or read or use in any way whatsoever and had forgotten he owned and put them in my donate pile and he found it before I got rid of them and let's just say that did not work out so well <laughs> for me. And I'm still dealing with that loss of trust in that anytime he's missing something, he still asks me if I threw it away when really it's just that he misplaced it. It's not worth it. Don't make the same mistake that I did. <laughs> Because as Marie says, there is an easier way. So let's get into that. There's four things that you can do. Number one is focus on what you can control, which is you. I've seen it in my own life and experience with other people too, but often when we are telling other people or ourselves that the problem is somebody else, we actually need to take a closer look at ourselves. It's just human nature to want to shift blame. And sometimes some of that blame isn't misplaced, but that doesn't mean that we're off the hook. The good news is that's entirely within our control. We can declutter our stuff. We're gonna talk more in this series about how to go about it. We're saving ourselves so much frustration over when we're just focused on what other people are doing wrong or what our spouse is doing wrong. That's just gonna make us miserable. So I know, <laughs> trust me, I know, it can be really, really hard. It's so much easier said than done, but it's so worth it to just let it go and focus on what you can control. And all we can control is ourselves and how we choose to respond to other people. Number two, make requests. So instead of dumping a bunch of his stuff somewhere and asking him to go through it, which is more of a demand because you're kind of forcing him into it, you can make requests. So you could say, can you move this stuff that is in my way here because I'm trying to declutter this closet. Or can you find a new home for this stuff? You can make requests knowing that he might say no, 
hopefully though, if you're coming at it from a position of making requests instead of demands, you can find a compromise that's gonna work for you both. One thing that Brian and I were able to compromise on, he has a ton of sentimental stuff, which is the hardest stuff to go through. I was able to give him a giant tote and say, keep all the stuff that you can fit in here because Otherwise, it's just filling up our whole closet and that helps so you're able to at least keep it contained But honestly instead of asking him to declutter the most powerful way to get your husband to declutter is number three which is to model it and this truly works when you are going through a category of stuff and decluttering and letting go it's gonna kick off a whole bunch of other changes in your life you're gonna start feeling better, you're gonna start feeling happier and having more energy and just more motivation in life. Plus you're gonna see the results in your home and that's really addicting. And it's also really contagious. If he sees you go through your closet, cut it down by a huge percentage, actually get rid of all of that stuff and reorganize and then seize the energy that that gives you every day, eventually he's gonna want the same thing. I've Definitely seen this with Brian. I never in a million years thought that he would actually ever go through his closet, which was full of like every sports, student of the arts, band, t-shirt that he ever got in high school, plus every other shirt that he ever outgrew in college or in high school, and anything that had some sort of sentimental attachment to. After I've gone through my closet, he's seen the changes in my own life and he actually decided of his own volition to go through all of his stuff. Pretty amazing. And even after we had the whole fight problem over decluttering the books in the office, he went through those books and decided after all that he could let some of them go, which was a huge step. For him. This really works. It works not just for your husband but also for your kids as we're going to talk about next week. Modeling it is the most effective way to get your husband to declutter. You don't have to say a word. Your actions and your results are going to speak louder. Than and number four, reward his efforts. Even if he makes a step and gets rid of a couple of books but you're thinking you could have gotten rid of that whole shelf of books, reward his efforts. Give him praise. Tell him he's doing a great job thank him for what he's doing, that will go a long way. Even if it's not as decluttered as we would like or organized the way we would like, if you praise and reward his efforts, no matter how small they are, that is gonna fuel him to pursue it further. I dream of the day that Brian will let me organize the garage because to me it's just such a but even if that day never comes, the fact that he has on different occasions taken initiative to try to organize it and declutter it, that's a huge step and that is something to celebrate. Reward his efforts no matter how they look or if they're not as good as you would like. Any step in the right direction is worth celebrating. So this is a topic that we're going to discuss a lot more in depth in my course. It's going to be a 30 day total home reset. This course is going to be flexible enough to work for the average mom schedule and in it we're going to work through decluttering your space, your schedule, and your soul. Each week there'll be video lessons and worksheets to go through and there'll be habit hacks and ways to create the systems and processes you need to be able to declutter and organize and stay that way. As a Christian, this course and even this series is all coming from a place of wanting to please God in the things that I do and the way I live my life. No matter where you are in your spiritual journey, I hope that that's something that you can connect with too, of wanting to live your life with purpose and intention, really pursue your calling and what you're here on earth for. By the end of this course, we'll have a toolbox of the decision-making tools, the systems, the habits to maintain our home for long after this course ends. The course is going to launch in April. That is the plan. If you're excited about it and you want more information and if you want to be the first to know when the course is available, I'm posting a link in the description down below that you can pop in your email and get on the list. If you found this video helpful, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up down below and subscribe so you don't miss the next video in which we tackle our kids stuff. 
Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Although stealth, stealth tactics